What's up, everybody? Welcome to uh, to the new Let's Play channel. I am the loud guy up front, uh, and I decided, you know, I like video games. It's kind of my go-to thing. So uh, I figured, you know, if I'm not going to do reviews of them all the time, because I do want to mix in the TV and the movies and the music, but I do love gaming. So it only makes sense that I, you know, at least have a little Let's Play channel, because there's a lot of games that I want to play, a lot of thoughts I might have on certain games, and, you know, what the hell? Uh, you can join in and be a part of the fun. Uh, plus, you know, let's be honest, there's a lot more that I could say about a lot of games than what I'm just going to contain within like a 10 minute review. So, here I am. This is the first ever playthrough of Game It Loud. Uh, we're going with a, a classic in my book, and it's going to be a review soon. Uh, Mega Man 4. I, I, I could go on and on about the stories with this. I, I probably should just start a podcast for all the things I'm going to do, and actually, I think I'm probably going to start a podcast at some point, but we'll get to that down the road. In the meantime, let's play a little Mega Man 4. So, you probably know the general story when it comes to Mega Man games, that there's eight evil robots that are terrorizing the city, and there's one person that can stop them. He just opened his eyes. He knows what's up. It's freaking Mega Man. Uh, in this case, they switch it up a little bit. Rather than it being Dr. Wily, who is allegedly terrorizing the city, this time it's a new, a, a new bad guy, so they think, uh, Dr. Cossack. And he had a handful of robots, and now it's up to Mega Man to beat them and save the city. Whatever city it is that they live in. I wish they would specify uh, and at least give us a name, but, you know, they don't. Uh, and we're left with what we have. Anyway, this time equipped with a powerful new Mega Buster. Now, I'll admit, early on in my Mega Man days, having a charged up gun was pretty much all I knew. Because uh, I was a little bit late to the party. So it, it was a weird adjustment for me to go back to Mega Man without a charge shot. Anyway, uh, let's, let's get into playing the game. Now, this game's music, I think, is second to none as far as Mega Man games go. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is the uh, the, the menu select of the Robot Master, so let's just get right into it. Oh yeah, check that out. Freaking rocking. Not to mention, the, the background, the bosses, the images, it's just, ah, this game freaking is awesome. I won't say it's my fav favorite Mega Man, because it isn't, because it, but it does hold kind of a special spot in my heart. And so that's why, you know, it, it, it's going to be the first time in a review. Anyway, we're going to start off with, obviously, the, where you start off in Mega Man 4. you got to go with Toad Man. The reason being, uh, well, for one, you know, the level's decently easy, I think. Uh, and I actually, I'm not totally sure the progression that you're, like, supposed to go through with the bosses and who everyone's weaknesses. I know a handful of them. Um, at least the first couple I'm gonna do, I've got those ones down. Uh, but from there, things get a little bit hazy. But I do know, I do know that Toad Man is the first one up, and you can probably see from the video description that Bright Man is coming next, because Toad Man just kinda owns Bright Man. So, or I guess his weapon, rather. These jumps right there, these are, uh, Every once in a while, I totally screw up on these because you got the rain. When you jump, the rain's pushing you back. So these jumps, you have to actually like go all the way to the edge, and that's kind of something they do a lot in this game, which I think is good. I think they they maybe overuse it a tiny bit, but for the most part, it's pretty. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's challenging enough, I'd say. I know I'm probably like running through this, and some people are like, "Man, Mega Man games are a little bit harder than this," but. Uh, just disclaimer, I've, I've played this game a, a decent amount, and really, really just Mega Man games in general, so the overall feel, it's it's like riding a bike for me. Oh yeah, and there's a few power-ups down there, you know, if you've never played this before and you're ever short on health. But like I said, this level, kind of straightforward, you go through, there's water running that kind of pushes you all over. We get this big snail dude, who you gotta wait for when his eyes are open. He's either gonna shoot bombs at you, or he's gonna shoot his actual eyes out, you, out at you. Um, the biology of this, no freaking clue. Uh, but you know what, who cares, it's, it's a robot anyway, because it's exploded. So, uh, you know, pretty cool in the future that you can make giant robotic snails that shoot their eyes at you. 
Uh, so, you know, we got that and hoverboards to look forward to. But this one's a little bit tougher because you have the running water, and if you get hit by one of these bombs, it's gonna, you know, stun you for a second, and then there's a decent chance that you go blowing off the edge. Right there, I was lucky enough to be kind of right in the middle, because you can stand in the middle and be alright. But, right there, oh, okay. <laughs> alright. I made that a lot more difficult than it had to be, but anyway, these guys, for whatever reason, these fish in this game, sometimes they're just really easy to deal with for me, and other times I like will get stuck in this little rut where I can't get away from them. It is agitating as all hell. Anyway, uh, as is protocol with a Mega Man game, you don't run through gates, you freaking jump through them. Uh, and it brings us to Toad Man, who is the most ridiculously easy robot master ever. The reason why is when you hit him, he's just going to jump over you. And you just run back and forth and keep hitting him. So it's, I mean, it's a little tedious. It takes a second. Um, which is actually kind of the case with a handful of the bosses in this game. But Toad Man is, without question, as easy as it gets. Because, look at this. You don't even, you don't need to charge up. You just hit him a couple times. Well, it's only going to do one bar of damage each time. Oh, that time I screwed up. <laughs> it's going to do one bar of damage each time, and you're set to go. So anyway, get the easy one out of the way. Uh, easy level, easy boss. You get going. Get some power going from here. Oh, yeah. I always loved how they added that spinning effect to the power-up, rather than just the, uh... Like, I guess they're maybe energy pellets or whatever the power is just kind of flowing in each side. I like that they circle around. It, it, it just kind of feels a lot more badass than how it used to be. Uh, oh, yeah, and another thing with this, you get Rush Marine from Toad Man, which is fitting. I like that they put it in kind of a water level. Uh, it might have made more sense to have it in Dive Man's level, but whatever. Anyway, uh, natural progression of things, obviously. We got to go Bright Man now. Um... This has always been one of my favorite songs in any Mega Man game. I'm just going to shut up for a second and let it play. Just listen to that. Freaking money in the bank. Now this opening part, you have these guys that are, they have lights on them. And uh, you probably saw when you hit them, the lights go out. You gotta hit those little guys with the... Uh, you kill them and they shoot fireworks. It's like the best reward for killing someone ever. Um, and the lights come back on. The hardest part with that is that one long jump where... If you don't have the lights, I mean, that's another one that I mentioned earlier. That you kind of you kind of need to be all the way to the edge in order to make the jump. Like I said, a theme in this game. Um, right there, a lot of times you'll miss hitting that guy because he walks down right off the ledge and you can't get a straight shot on him after that. So uh, I got him that time, so luckily I'm, I'm not dead and I don't have to do anything embarrassing like backtrack. Uh, but I can't promise that that won't be the case coming up here because I just, I've got a knack for screwing up this part. This little area is optional. Um, you got these little lifts that when they get to the end, they'll fall off the edge. You gotta time your jumps. Um, which honestly, I I'm probably gonna mention this when I do the review of this finally, but they really added a lot of things in this game where you need time jumps in order to make certain things. And a lot of them, you'll need to have a fully charged shot in order to do so, because, you know, mid-jump there might be a bad guy coming your way, and you need a fully charged shot to actually clear him out, or you're going to get hit and fall into a gap. Um, it, it's a nice challenge, and I think a nice usage of the charge shot, uh, which, you know, is, I think, a good addition to the game. The series at this point kind of needed it, um, and it just gives you, like, I don't know, something, it, it's a more value sort of piece of your arsenal. Oh, crap. Get some sweet video lag there with, uh, all the grasshoppers and this totem pole thing that wants to kill me. But, like, right there, you gotta, you gotta unload a handful of shots from the very start in order just to get past that. And, uh, you know, if you don't, the grasshopper's gonna turn around, you're going the other way. Um, and I'm not sure if they respawn, I think they do. So you don't have to worry about necessarily dying. Okay, we're back to the light bulb guys again. This is where it gets a little bit tough because 
then, you know, I'm just going to fall and die. Uh, I got a little antsy and didn't time my jump right. But So this is one of those spots where you, you want to hit the light bulb guys before, uh, before you actually make the jump. Because one, they're out of your way. Two, they're going to drop a little scatter bomb that is going to shoot out a handful of uh, different shots in multiple directions. So um, when those, like they're not going super fast, but they will catch up. And if you get hit by them, it's going to knock you off and, you know, if you're not on the ball, like I wasn't just there, uh, jumping between platforms, you're going to fall and you're going to die, and it's going to be embarrassing, because then you're going to put it on YouTube, maybe, and people will see and laugh at you and tell you you suck at Mega Man. Um, I think I'm okay at this. I, I'll, I'll admit, I'm not an expert. Uh, far from it, even. But I, I'm pretty good. I, I can beat Mega Man 2 uh, pretty easily. I actually... I try to speed run it, or speed run it whenever I get a chance, just because, you know, when you when you get good enough at a game, oh, right there, oh, shit, <laughs> so that's one of those spots again where if you don't time it, which I obviously didn't, you're going to get freaking drilled in the air and you will be dead, so now I'm going to go through all of this again, deal with the totem poles and the grasshoppers and the embarrassment, um, gosh, Talk about a freaking start to this whole Let's Play thing. I'm just totally dropping the ball on the game that I chose to be the first one. But, you know, what the hell? Let's get a little redemption, huh? What problem is, am I down to my last life? Oh no, I got one extra. Okay, so I at least have that. If I uh, get to Bright Man and manage to not beat him, which, I mean, it's a possibility. A lot of the. A lot of the bad guys in this game, or the Robot Masters, I guess, if they hit you, they do a pretty good amount of damage. So you see that bullet in the bottom? That's what I was talking about with the scattershot thing. That will come and that will mess your world up. Um, not to say that there aren't other things that aren't doing that right now. There we go. But yeah, they'll just kind of trail you, they'll catch up, and jump through the gate, obviously. All right. I'm getting out, uh, Toad Man, little uh, rain shower thing. It's time. So this, you just shoot in the air, and it just rains down Hellfire on Bright Man because you know electricity and all that. They don't mix. Ooh, I'm gonna drill. Oh, also gonna get drilled here. So that's what Bright Man does. He he shoots this little flash shot, and it stops you dead in your tracks. Uh, right there, I was right in the right spot to not get hit by him. Uh, so you kind of have to time your spots to jump over the bullets, whichever way they're coming. Uh, but for the most part, Bright Man's pretty easy, I think. And let's get my swirl effect that you know I'm all about. One downside is I think the the weapon music in this is definitely a uh, a step back, I'd say, from a couple of the other games, particularly the Mega Man Game Boy games. Those ones had awesome music when you got a new weapon. Uh, this one, you know, just whatever. Anyway, uh, that's it for the first episode. Uh, we knocked out two Robot Masters. We're going to do that uh, for each episode. So, uh, next up is going to be Pharaoh Man, because, uh, you know... Bright Man's weapon will make Pharaoh Man your bitch. Anyway, uh, we'll see you soon.